We just talked some in the last video lecture about tidy data and what makes a data set tidy in the sense that we're talking about, at least in this course. In the next set of video lectures, we'll talk about some different tools to take data that is not in that format and convert it into that format. So these are tools that you might use right at that space between reading in your data and then having it prepared so that you can create plots and tables and, and visualizations and do statistical modeling with the data. So one thing that we're going to talk about today is joining data sets. Um, one of the ways that tidy da the data can be untidy is that you could have data on the same unit of observation, but have it in two separate data frames or two separate data sources and need to join those together into one data frame. So far, we have only worked with a single data source at a time. Again, we've been very spoiled where we've had everything in one data frame to work with and we can just send that into ggplot or send that into our other tidyverse uh, functions. When you work on your own projects, though, you'll usually be getting your data in from other sources. So it's very common that you will need to join data sets together so that you will have information as different columns in the same data frame where you can send it into ggplot and these other, these other functions. As an example, in air pollution epidemiology, we'll often get in our data sets from different places, from the CDC and the EPA and NOAA. So we can have things like health outcome data and air pollution measurements and weather measurements, and even things from the U.S. Census like demographic data. In many cases, those might be measured at the same unit of observation, for example, in a location on a day or a location in a year. Um, but a lot of times we need to join those together because we got them from different places. There is a whole family of functions in the, in the tidyverse in a package called tidyr, T-I-D-Y-R, that, that all end with the word join. And these are all meant to join together different data frames. So we'll take a look at these first in our studio, and then we're gonna come back here and talk a little bit about the different ones in that family. Because it, it turns out that you have a few different options as you work with that. And then there are also some, some kind of subtleties and nuances to know about those functions to really be able to use them to, to full advantage. So let's go over and let's take a look at two kind of toy data sets. And I'll start by loading um, the tidyverse library. So I've done this sometimes in the code examples, but I haven't completely explained it yet. What's going on with this is this is kind of a wrapper package that will load a number of, of different packages we've been working with. And those include ggplot2 and dplyr and a number of those other ones in the tidyverse. So you can continue if you want to load this one by one. And I think it is helpful when you start to understand which packages go in which of those, excuse me, which functions go in which of those packages. But now you might want to save yourself a little bit of time by calling uh, tidyverse as a whole. So we'll call that. And next we're going to set up these two uh, data frames. So we've got two here, one's named class grades and one's named class days. And we can come down and take a look. So class grades, both of these are very simple and very short. That's got something called course and then grade and then a student identifier. So in other words, we might interpret this as in course X, student A got a 92 while student A got an 82 in course Y and student B got a 90 in course X and so on. The other piece of information that we have is class days. So we can come down and take a look at that as well. In this case, we again have courses. They've again are identified by letter and we've got students. So these are the students taking that course, but we also have this added information about what day that happens. So all of these join functions work in a pretty similar way, and I'm going to start just by showing you one, the one called a full join, and then we'll go back and we'll talk about what makes these different. But I think it's helpful at first to see how just one of them works, because a lot of the mechanics are very similar across all of them. So we have some columns that are the same in both of these. And let's say that the one that is definitely in common is this course identifier. So the course here and the course here. We can merge these two data sets together, and the example that I'll use right now is with the function called full join. So what we do is we put in full join, then we put in the names of the two data frames that we want to merge together. We call the first one that we put in the left data frame and the second one the right data frame. So let's say we want to merge class grades and then we want to merge class days. 
The last thing that we need to tell it is which column to use to make that join. So in this case, we want things that are listed with the same identifier for course in the two to be joined together. So we'll do by equals and course in quotation marks. So when I run that, you can see that it's put those two data frames together and it's done it as well as it could. In this case, there were some cases where we only had information from one of the two data frames and that's why we end up with some of these missing values. But in cases where we had information from both, you can see that it's merged the data in together. And for right now, we didn't specify that student was also common between the two. So it's kept the information on students from both of those, but then used the student.x and student.y to kind of distinguish. All right, so let's go back to the slides and we'll talk a little bit about these different types of joins. And then we'll talk about some of the, the details of using any of them, including, you know, if we wanted to join by two things at a time, like both course and student, or if in our data frames those names were different. Before we do, though, let me make one more note. You might have observed that the first thing that goes into this join function is a data frame, and that means we can pipe into it. So I could have written it this way as well, class grades, and then pipe in to full join. Now again, in this case, because we are piping in the first argument, we skip to the next thing that we would have done and put that in. We don't have to repeat that first argument. So this is what the piped version would look like. You can see that that runs the same way. And just a reminder here, I talked about before, sometimes we will call this the left data frame in this join, and this one the right data frame because that is the order that you're putting them in here. But keep in mind that they still have that order even if you're piping in and it looks like the first thing you see after the full join call is the right data frame. So we will still consider this the left one, the first one that comes in, even though it's being piped in, and this one is the right one. All right, so let's get through this family of functions now. We have inner join, full join, left join, and right join. So to think about the differences between these two, let's think for just a minute about where you might have common and missing data. So I've done these kind of two toy example data frames here. Again, they're giving courses and grades and then courses and days. And in this case, we might want to merge these two based on the course column. That's the column that we have in common across the two. We can look at the values that we have, the observations that we have in that column, and you can see that there are some that exist in both columns. So I've shown this in the Venn diagram as green, and I've also highlighted this as green. So math and English we have in both the course grades data frame and the course days data frame. There are some things that we only have in one or the other though. So over here in the yellow, these are observations we have in course grades, but not course days, and you can see that that's the course science. And then in blue are the ones that we have the inverse in course days, but not course grades. So in this case, that's art where we have here in course days, but is missing from course grades. When we do an inner join, all of these different um, join functions, the only difference is what they keep when you, they have that case that you have some values in the column you're joining by that are in one of the data frames, but not both. So when you do an inner join, it's only keeping those things in the middle of the Venn diagram. In this case, it would only keep rows for math and English because those are the only values that show up in both of the two. So in this case, we might do inner join with course grades and course days. We're saying that we want to do it by that course. And what we'll get is this smaller data frame. We can take a look over here where we were doing an example in R. So we were doing full join before. And here's the example down here of what we got. If we change this to inner join, these rows where we have missing values because they didn't exist in both of the data frames, those won't be included anymore. We'll only get the rows where the information was available across both. So you can see now that we have a shorter data frame that we get where it is only, it's limited to places where we had a course listed both in the course grades and in the course days. The next is a full join. That's the first example that I showed. In this case, it keeps everything. So it's keeping everything that's listed at all. And then it just puts missing values and A's in if there is a column coming in from one of the two data frames where there, there wasn't that listing in the original. So for example, 
our final here, we're getting grade from this left data frame and we're getting day from this right data frame. Now the art value for course only exists in the right data frame. So when we look in the grade column for art, you can see that it has a missing value. In the same way, science is only in the left one. So if we look at this day column that was joined in from the right side data frame, you can see that that's got a missing value for science. The next two will let you keep everything in one of the data frames, but only keep things in the other data frame that have a match. So a left join will keep everything that an inner join would, and then also anything that shows up in the left-hand data frame, um, but not the right-hand. So that's why in this case, if we join these together, we're going to keep science because that shows up in this left-hand data frame. But art, which only shows up in the right, we lose when we do the join together. And then a right join works exactly the opposite way. It will only keep things on the right-hand side. Um, people always ask me, and it's a very astute question, why we have both a left join and a right join, because you could just flip in your call the order of the two and then maybe um, uh, be able to achieve the same thing. And the reason why, there are two reasons that, that I have come across in my own coding. First of all, because we can pipe into these joins, a lot of times you want to put this in a pipeline where you're doing a lot of other things. And then it might not be very convenient to switch out and change the order that you put these in because you're taking whatever you just piped through. And that by default will be the left-hand data frame because you're piping it in. So that's one case. Another case, later in the class, we'll get into some more complex versions of data frames where you're adding on some special information or special characteristics, but otherwise can operate as if it were a tidy data frame. One example is with the SF package. That's, uh, it stands for simple features, but it's, it's used for creating um, and storing really helpful uh, ge geographical data. So it's really helpful for mapping. And in those cases, when you join it with a regular data frame, which you can do, which makes it very convenient, if it's on the left-hand side, I believe it retains that spatial information. But if it's on the right-hand side, when you do a join, it loses that and reverts back to a typical data frame. So those are two cases that are a little bit more complex where you need to have both of these. Right now, I'm just asking you to learn both of these, but we won't get into this more complex cases of, of when you really need to have both a left and a right version until later in the class. All right, so now I'm gonna go and talk a little bit about slightly more complex things that might come up when you're trying to use these and how you can handle them. So I'm gonna use this example data frames again, and I've got some slides here that you're welcome to use to take notes. But let's take a look if we had different names for the columns that we want to join by. So in that case, one thing that we can do is we can actually do a list for this. And in the examples I have in the code, I think that I have these two data frames named with the object names X, X and Y. Here I'm using these longer ones, but there might be a little bit of difference in the code and the example slides compared to this because of that difference. So we can say that in the X, the left data frame, we have that information as course, but then in the Y data frame, we have that information, that column named as class. So this is telling R that this information is, is the same, that this is the column that's got values that we can match up in doing that joining, but we've got different names for them in the original data frames. So let me make sure that I have this newer version of the class days run. And now let's come down and run this. And now you can see it's still done that join, it is retained as the column name in the joined version, whatever the left-hand column name was. So because we were putting left class grades in as the left-hand um, data frame and doing this join, it's kept that as course. Now, the other thing that might happen is that we might have uh, two columns that we want to join on. So if we look at class grades and class days, let's see. You can see that we've got this column that gives the class, and we know even though one's named course and one's named class for the column names that that's giving the same kind of information. But we've also got student. Let's say now that the student really does mean the same thing. So the student A here really is the same person as the student A down here. 
We can join by both of these columns at the same time. We will just expand our by list a little bit up here. Let's clean it up just a little. So we'll do a vector of these instead of doing a single value. So we'll say first course and then student, that those are the two values that we want to join by. And then we can do the same thing down here for the Y. So if we take a look at that, now you can see that we've retained both course and student and it's matched on both of those. So, so to put things together, it had to have that match on both elements. As a note, if we don't do that, because that column name was the same before, if we go up and look earlier when we did that without also joining on student, in the final data frame, it tacks on this dot X and dot Y. And it's doing that so that it can distinguish these two things that we said it shouldn't be joined, shouldn't be matched together on. It's distinguished those so that we can tell which one came from the original left-hand data frame, that's the one it's labeled with dot X, and which one came from the original Y data frame, which is labeled with dot Y. So these slides walk through, and you can use these again to take notes on some of the things that we did. As I just mentioned, I had those data frames labeled as X and Y in doing these examples so that they were a little bit shorter. So that's the only difference compared to here where we have them labeled as class grades and class days. And this is just where we did the definition. So again, just a few things to point out in doing this joining. The joining column name for the left data frame is used as the column name for the join data. So again, that's the case that if you had two different um, column names that you were pulling together. Um, a note again about using student, because that was repeated in both data frames, if you don't join by that as well, then a dot x gets gets added to the one that was coming originally from the left-hand data frame and a dot Y from the right hand. And then also values end up being recycled across rows where there are multiple matches across the data frame. So there might be multiple rows in this uh, example from course X. Here is a slide showing that example where we want to join on two things at once. And again, we're just putting in a vector of both of the things and this should be in the right, in, in the same order. So we're giving first the name, even though it's different, for the column in each data frame that has the course identifier, and then next in order, the one with the student identifier.